Smells good, Ramona. She's sleeping. Don't wake her. Of course not. Do me a favor, Ramona. I need these tunics washed and dried by dawn. No, no. I finished favors for men. I do favors for Harper, and look how he treats me. How he treat you? I mean, how does he treat you? He treats me like a whore. <laughs> Have a word with you, Harper. What's this between you and Ramona? She's not talking to me. Well, what have you done to her? Nothing. Well, whatever it is you're not doing, go and do it. That's not your business. Whatever business this is, get it sorted out. If that means I'm going to wash and clean your tunics, well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm not. Take her back to Ramona's tent. I've taken her back three times already. I'll take her back again then. It's no use. She just keeps running back here. <laughs> Easy, lass. Easy. Look, you can stay here, but you must sleep under your own blanket. Harper, you'll sleep at the bottom of my bed. Just to make sure nothing happens that's not in army regulations. What? Good God, lass, go and put some clothes on. She hasn't got any clothes. Well, tell her morning to go and get her some, damn you. I asked her. She told me to shag off. It's loaded, Harper. I know. Army regulations state never leave loaded weapons lying around the camp. You must have missed that one. Listen, it's not very often I raise my fist to a man. But when I do, I'll leave evidence of it. I believe that. So what's between you and Ramona? Ramona wants me to marry her and take her back to Ireland. Well, since you've got a young son running around the camp, I don't see much wrong with that, Harper. I don't. So? I love Ramona. I love her a lot. I love her enough not to take her back to my bloody country. And she's Spanish. And she's got a son born out of wedlock. My son! For Christ's sake, no man or woman in Ireland would look at the side of the road she walked on. And, of course, there's my mother. Your mother? When I was 17. My mother made a match for me with a girl called Annie Brady from Dunwile. My mother adored her. And do you know, she was the most beautiful girl you've ever seen since the first day. You're not telling me you're married, are you, Albert? No, I'm not! Annie Brady died on me. And do you know, I don't think my mother ever recovered. Well, I'll tell you, if I was to arrive home in Ireland with a Spanish wife and a child, well, she'd never forgive me. Harper, look around you. What do you see? I see soldiers. No, you don't. You see truth tellers. Liars, mongrels, bastards, men who have tumbled into this war. The madness that is this war. That's what you see, isn't it? That's what I see. 
And they all have one thing in common. What's that? They live by the sword. And they prepare to die by the sword. They have little else, but they have honor. And you're going to have to show the mother of your child that same honor, Harper. So start praying, Pat. Too hard on him, Richard. Poor fellow's only trying to be pleasant. I don't trust the bugger. Too bloody good to be true. He's just trying to please, Richard. He's frightened, far from home. Prisoners are always anxious to please. That's why they smile all the time. All right. Why's that then, Jack? Well, I've been that soldier. I spent six months as a prisoner of the French. I was captured after I was wounded. The French surgeon hacked this off. Took his bloody time about it, too. Something about him. He's as strong as a bull, but he walks like a woman. His eyes are everywhere. You can never see what he's looking at. He's like a gun laid up. All greased, but ready to go off. Could you persuade Barclay to convene a court of honour tonight? When we make camp? I think I've proof he's not the man he says he is. The only way Barclay will do that is if the French he has someone to speak for him, sort of sort of a devil's advocate. Well, you could do that. Well, very well. Word of warning, though, Richard. Barclay will get into a fearful wax if you get it wrong. Don't worry. I'll hang the bugger out to dry. <laughs> Oh, don't look, Ellis. Sir? 